Well, um, the only thing I'm saying is that the original people who came from, and the Dovan people say we came from star Sirius B, it may be correct that people had to, as Chakanta Giyap says, the people around Lake Victoria and in the, the eastern part of Africa where people are thought to have been found by the skulls and, and, and the archaeology, the archaeological remains that they found had to have been melanated. So it means then if the first people were deposited on the earth in that area, they had to have been melanated for probably a lot of reasons and because they were the only ones and they had that pigmentation in that area and other people were elsewhere where there's no pigmentation. I, I buy the theory that everybody comes from one species of persons called, called you know, I, it's kind of hard to, to the fact that there's some people that have many other differences in form and no pigment etc hair and all like that to show that that was an evolutionary mutational change is very mm -hmm. difficult for me to establish in my own mind i think that there may have been two creations i'm not too sure you know one original mm -hmm. one and one of using uh some of the things from the original people to produce another people or to make another people that may have been possible because of the vast differences between the outcome, you know, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we differ based on some mixing in and so on and so forth. But when you have a whole group of people, a whole population of people that have features that are similar and uh, similarities you cannot seem to connect back, you had to have, it, it would suggest that there was some other kind of creation or some other kind of process that that carried out some time in history, you know. I mean, all that evidence we don't have. It may be someplace hidden. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it, people say that we all came from Africans, but that's a theory, and I don't really buy that one. Well, I want to talk about the uh, different kinds of melon. Okay, uh, I, and how one you, you you it may be repeating yourself, but I wanted to get a deeper understanding. Okay, how one melon is uh, the difference between I'm, I'm okay. a little thick so okay let, no you're you're fine you're asking good questions eu melanin yeah eu melanin eu prefix that's the scientists call one type eu melanin which right. is u melanin uh -huh. and that melanin is defined as brown to black pigment okay and then there's a second kind called phao melanin which is dusky melanin it is not brown to black. It may tend to be red or some other variation of that. And sci uh, the scientific, uh, the, American, uh, the, Na the National Academy of Sciences had a whole issue on the different kinds of melanin and the types and the classes of them with the people put put each group up that they fit under that melanin, like the red people, people, so on. They have different kinds of melanin. But the real true melanin, according to that prefix, is eumelanin, which is brown to black, which is the melanin that African peoples have. Now, what can it do that perhaps the other melanin okay. don't do? Okay, all right. So it can capture light. It can filter out certain kinds of the light that is not conducive for the human organism to function. And then it organizes all of the systems because it's found in areas where function is very strong. Mm -hmm. So it can organize systems and organize functions in the human organism because of the chemistry of that. It's very strong. It has sulfur in it. It has hydrogens in it. And we are the people of the sun. The sun generates hydrogens down and helium down, which means that, that melanin is part and parcel hydrogens and heliums, or hydrogens mainly, and other things, mm -hmm. sulfur and so on. So our melanin is what they call true because it protects us. We don't get melanomas from it. And uh, we can stand the sun a great deal of time without any problems for the most part. Mm -hmm. Whereas the fail melanin is a form of eumelanin, meaning if we put them in one category, we have to say a form of eumelanin. Although it doesn't necessarily mean that fail melanin came from eumelanin. Uh, in a sense, maybe sort of halfway you know, if, if, if people were a second creation, then they have taken some from the eumelanin group 
and some from something else and created this new kind of people with the failed melanin. <clears throat> so there's a difference in chemistry and functions of the mm -hmm. failed melanin. It doesn't uh, capture the light energy and filter out certain harmful rays, ultraviolet rays. Uh, it tends to take it in and cause problems, for example, of explosion in the skin that we call cancer. It will turn black in those melanoma tumors, uh, but it's, it can be deposited smoothly throughout the body like you melanin can in African peoples and other kinds of people that have brown color. So people who want to who want to uh, use skin lightness and lighten themselves up, what are they doing to themselves? I mean, well, that's based on this Eurocentric model that whiteness is what one need to get to and be and become. So that's based mainly on what Francis Crest called Francis Crest Wilson called white supremacy racism, meaning then that one tenth of the world's population is without melanin, and nine tenths have the pigment, and so the one tenth. And, and also they're small in numbers, meaning one tenth. So there's a, an attempt to, 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 to create a kind of protection to prevent genetic annihilation. That is, if, if ones that don't have it mix with those that do have it, then you're going to lose that population of that one tenth. It's going to get less and less and less. So rules and laws are made to, pre, uh, to uh, genetic annihilation mm -hmm. uh, of, of that people that that themselves, you know, white and so on, ca Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Well, uh, yeah, it does in a way, but I wondered, uh, are people, say like Michael Jackson, who did mm -hmm. uh, a, a change in his pigment, yes. are they, okay, how harm are they doing? Because all over Africa, people mm -hmm. are using skin creams to right. lighten themselves. Okay. This is I, I get I, back to the point now, I understand what you're asking, that these, because of of domination of racism and white supremacy by a group of people who made it so, uh, that kind of uh, psycho psychosocial concept is, has the entire globe that one needs to be without a pigment, white. And so that shows that kind of internalization has occurred throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So that a strong force that's generated by the people that are ruling, they're in charge. That 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 you know, if you're white, you're right, and if you're black, you know, you're you're down, and so on. So Michael Jackson and these people to be accepted, and that happened when I was growing up too. But at that time, to be accepted, then you have to get as closer to whiteness as you can to get jobs, so that you're socially and psychologically as well accepted. Then you need to go closest, closer and closer towards the lightness, because. They, they are blackness or darkness. So that's just the social cultural kind of construct that people have internalized and they're using that as a, as a positive way of, of accepting people. What know? is the damage of the that skin, it can the do to, to the whole body is, as I said, it can destroy functions in the body. And one has to look closer to one who does that to see what damage it does in that person's body. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson uh, may have have some kind of uh, oh I don't know uh, body condition. I don't kept up with what the doctors say he has, you know, lupus or whatever. But it can create various body conditions because it's a functional molecule. Mm -hmm. It functions in the nervous system, in the endocrine system, in the digestive system, in the kidney system, in the reproductive system, and all of those systems. So it has to do then with what part of the system that was weak enough to become damaged as a result of your bleaching the skin on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. See, you have to put the chemical or the toxin there on a consistent basis. That's one of the things of taking medication. You must have the medication in a certain concentration for a, a certain period of time mm -hmm. in order for that thing to show some kind of efficacy. So what I'm saying is that when you consistently take something or use something on your skin or in your hair or wh wherever, then with time you destroy the natural original function of that particular area that you are exposing to a chemical. And then some damage can, you, we don't have to give it a name, but I'm saying some damage can occur as a result of the use of some chemical poison consistently. Mm -hmm.